Indian origination, we have to use two factors together in order to show the connection. It is very much like when you draw a picture of a chain, it has uh, links. Uh, so you have to draw at least one half of the previous link uh, and another half from, from the next link. So the next ring. So when you show two half rings on the left side and two half, one half rings on the right side, and in the middle, you draw a full ring so that it shows that there is a connection, a link. Similarly, whenever we talk about uh, dependent origination, we have to use, use uh, two of them. The one before the current one and the other after the current one. The first one we mentioned was uh, ignorance. When we mentioned ignorance, uh, somebody can ask, uh, is ignorance stand, standing by itself without any uh, connection with anything uh, before that or after that? That is not true. Ignorance depends on uh, R server influxes, then R server, influ R server ignorance and volition formations. These are the three. So the volitional formation, when we want to mention volitional formations, we have to mention ignorance and uh, consciousness or vinyana. So Vijnana or consciousness arise depending on volitional formations and depending on consciousness arises materiality and mentality. This is how it goes. It is very easy to read these things or repeat these words and links and so forth. But understanding the connection is the difficult thing. That is why we need some uh, discussion and talks and thinking. Uh, consciousness <clears throat> uh, does not arise by itself. Uh, no consciousness uh, continuously run through our existence in samsara. Not same consciousness. There was a monk called Sati. Uh, who went on telling his fellow monastics that as he understood the Dhamma taught by the Buddha, it was the same consciousness that goes from life to life. He probably might have, we don't know the reason, but we uh, try to find out uh, a reason, probable reason. We don't know. Uh, probably he might have remembered the stories, Jataka stories, that the uh, Bodhisattva, uh, the one who was destined to be Buddha, uh, had uh, in many, many, many lives. Uh, 555 are listed in one uh, commentary. It is called Book of Jataka. In that 555 are mentioned. In each story, the protagonist, the chief actor, is Bodhisattva, the, the Buddha to be, to become in future. So, and also we uh, talk about uh, parami, uh, perfections. So, uh, there are 10 perfect in the Theravada tradition and six of them in Mahayana tradition. So 
it is said that uh, uh, Siddhartha Gautama attained enlightenment by completing, perfecting perfections, ten perfections. They are called perfections because they perfected his uh, enlightenment, attainment, or uh, he had to perfect them to achieve enlightenment. And therefore, they are called perfections, ten perfections. So I think when the Barasati might have thought, um, also I don't know as uh, footnote I must mention, uh, this, this uh, teaching of uh, Parami and Jataka. Uh, we have Jataka original stanzas, but not Jataka stories as original in text, they are uh, composed later on in by commentators. Therefore, they are called Jataka Thakata, Jataka Thakata, commentary to Jataka. Therefore, it is uh, unlikely that Venerable Sati knew anything about perfections or Jataka stories. However, this is our speculation. Uh, whatever it may be, he was uh, also he also has a reason. Another reason that we think is that when one attains uh, uh, jhanas and develop a mental state, uh, special powers, supernatural powers, one of which is to be able to uh, see previous existence and uh, existence after this life. So this, uh, he so therefore might have concluded, there must be the same consciousness that runs from life to life through our samsara. And that is what he was, he, was, he simply was telling his uh, friends, fellow monks, that as he understood the Dhamma, as Buddha taught, he thought, the same consciousness runs from life to life unbroken. But these monks, his fellow monks, uh, tried to persuade him not to hold on to that pernicious view. It is called pernicious view because it is not as Buddha taught, uh, that Buddha taught. It was his own personal view, a wrong view. And therefore, they tried to persuade him not to uh, discredit the Buddha, don't, not to misrepresent the Buddha. It would be very harmful. It is one of the akusala, unwholesome, because once you misinterpreted the Buddha's teaching, you teach wrong Dhamma and also make other people believe, uh, believe it. And they also might think, yes, that is what Buddha taught. And therefore, these monks tried to persuade him not to try to uh, propagate uh, these views, not to believe in that. But uh, they could not uh, persuade him. Finally, they went to the Buddha and reported to him. We, we will start from there uh, after this uh, meditation and so forth. Let us begin our meditation. That one, no, no, metta. This is it, right? No, that is not what we are reciting every day. Yeah, they all being be happy and secure. This is it, right? Oh, 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 okay. On the left. Yeah. The left. Okay. Yeah. Let us begin our loving friendliness practice. You can see on the screen. And as I said, uh, 
let us make this uh, recital to uh, share our living friendliness uh, with all those who are suffering from this uh, COVID-19. And we want to wish all of them to be free from that virus and uh, return to their normal health and uh, continue their life in peace and harmony. With this wish in mind and also wishing all those who are celebrating their Mother's Day, uh, generally America's Mother's Day, uh, we also want to wish them peace and happiness and success in their celebration. Now let us begin our Metta recital. May all beings be happy and secure. May all beings have happy minds. Whatever living beings there may be, without exception, weak or strong, long, large, medium, short, subtle or gross, visible or invisible, living near or far, born or coming to birth, may all beings have happy minds. Let no one deceive another nor despise anyone anywhere, neither from anger nor ill will, should anyone wish harm to another. As a mother would risk her own life to protect her only child, even so towards all living beings, one should cultivate a boundless heart. One should cultivate for all the world a heart of boundless loving friendliness, above, below, and all around, unobstructed, without hate or resentment, whether standing, walking, sitting, lying down, or whenever awake, one should develop this mindfulness. This is called divinely growing here, not falling into erroneous views, but virtuous and endowed with vision, removing desires from sensual pleasures. One comes never again to birth in the womb. With this very marvelous, wholesome, universal, living, friendly thought, the thought that we cultivate without any reservation, without putting any boundaries and limitations, we want to cultivate this thought, especially now, People ask us how this works to help others. I personally believe, friends, if we all, no matter, not only those of a uh, few hundred of us doing it together, but not in the same form that we uh, recited now, but in any form, anywhere, in their own words, in their own languages, wherever they are, if they practice this, this definitely will help people to recover from numerous diseases because this purifies our blood, not only oxygen, but these kind of thoughts purify our blood. That is why this kind of thought is called Mano Sanchetana Ahara. Among four kinds of food, mental thought or Sanchetana means volitional thinking becomes a food. And this is a volitional thinking, metta practice does not happen automatically. We deliberately condition our mind to be pure and clean, free from hatred and anger and delusion. That definitely generate positive hormone, powerful hormone, good hormone, which helps to recover 
from certain diseases, especially when the blood is pure and clean, even some virus can be warded off, overcome. With th this is how it works with intention. Let us wish this together as a one human being in one body with one mind, with one intention. Let us make this wish for all those who are suffering to be free from their suffering. With this, we begin our mindfulness part. At this moment, focus your mind on the breath and breathe in and out without verbalizing or conceptualizing or trying to control the breath. Let the breath flow in and out as naturally as it does. And then while doing so, you notice the breath touching your nostrils and expanding your lungs, expanding your lower abdomen. As you breathe out, lower abdomen contracts, chest contracts, the breath leaves the nostrils and disappears. That is what is happening all the time that we are aware or not. Now we do it deliberately with awareness in order to prevent all un unreason, unwholesome mental state from arising. And even to overcome unwholesome or already arisen mental states. And then <clears throat> We notice the breath is flowing in and out. Feeling arises along with the breath that also moves. Perception arises that changes. Volition or thought arises that changes. Consciousness arises that also changes. They together with the arising of breath, they pass away together with the passing away of breath. When we see this phenomenon, this truth, this reality, there won't be any room in the mind for unwholesome states to arise. The body becomes calm and relaxed. The breath becomes calm and relaxed. The mind becomes calm and relaxed. When these three segments are calm and relaxed, then any resentment, anger, that might arise will not be there. Any greed will not be there. When the greed has and disappears and resentment passes and disappears, then there arises another very powerful moment of metta in the absence of hatred. And then arises compassion as a result of Generous, generous feeling, letting go of feeling and metta feeling, compassion also arises. Then joy arises, happiness arises, and concentration arises. So our greed, hatred, restlessness and worry, sleepiness and drowsiness, and doubt fade away. When they fade away, we gain very good concentration with the meaning, uh, the thought of letting go, metta, compassion, joy, happiness. Concentration arises. When we gain concentration, our awareness of impermanence of the slightest subtlest, deepest way we understand, we can see the mind, concentrated mind, can see that that is what actually happening all the time. And with this awareness, we continue for next few minutes in silent 
meditation. When he, when the monks could not uh, persuade him to give up his pernicious view, as they reported to the Buddha, Buddha sent for him a, a message, another monk. That monk brought Vindamal Sati to the Buddha and then Buddha asked him whether what he said or what he heard was true or not. Vindamal Sati said, Vindamal Sati, what you have heard about what I said is true. I, as you taught me the Dhamma, understood the same consciousness goes from life to life, not other. Then Buddha asked uh, Vendama Sati, do where have I said that the same consciousness goes from life to life? Where have you heard me say that? Then he was silent because he does not remember Buddha saying that. He did not say, when the man said, you said somewhere, but I don't remember where it is. Yeah, you said it. That was some people, how, how some people say. But Radhi said, when the man said, this is, this is what you said. Then Buddha asked, where have you heard me say this? To whom? Have you not heard that consciousness is conditioned? Uh, remember the word condition and conditioner. Now, uh, sankharas or volitional formations are the conditioners of vijnana, uh, consciousness. How do they condition? Any time any activity takes place in our mind, that instant consciousness arises. Any activity. It is just like uh, uh, when you are in sleep, uh, you are not conscious of anything except maybe in your dreams. But otherwise, when you are in deep sleep, you are not conscious. As soon as something happens, immediately you become, you are awake and consciousness begin to function. That is how activity that uh, hearing something very all of a sudden is like our volitional formations our activities. So volitional formations or sankharas are activities, actions. It, they are not like ignorance. Ignorance is not activity, it is just there, not knowing. But activities or volitional formations are activities. The very reason why they are called volitional formations, because they form with will. Will is an active state and its uh, activities also are very dynamic. As soon as some dynamism, something dynamic, active happens, consciousness arises. So Buddha called this consciousness is named after the one that conditions it. Consciousness is named after the one that conditions it. What are the things, so he said, he gave examples, that uh, condition consciousness. For instance, when I and the visual objects meet, consciousness arises. It doesn't take too long and you cannot even find uh, in terms of time, uh, in terms of frequency, you cannot categorize or list 
can, uh, I open visual objects are there and then they meet. When we talk about them, explain them, it may occur in our mind that I open visual objects will appear and then consciousness arise. Uh, that is how we probably can think. But <clears throat> as soon as the eye open, something in uh, in the in 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 the presence of I in front of I appears. That is its object. The very thing that eyes do is seeing objects, as you all know, very simple. And as soon as that happened, along with that, consciousness arises instantly, almost simultaneously. I use the word simultaneously, but um, there are uh, very minute uh, nano time, maybe nanosecond, <laughs> and so forth, I don't use. I cannot know them very well, but it uh, doesn't happen simultaneously. There is maybe a fraction of a nanosecond uh, different uh, between eye opening, visual object coming, and consciousness arising. And that consciousness is called eye consciousness. Eye consciousness. When ear hears a sound or sound hits the eardrum, that instant ear consciousness arises. It was Chakku Vinyana. Similarly, when the nose smell an odor, pleasant or unpleasant or neutral, that instant consciousness arises. That is called Gana Vinyana. I give the Pali words, uh, or in English we say nose consciousness. When we say nose consciousness, eyes consciousness, ear consciousness, uh, there may be some shade of connotation in English uh, that when we translate into English. But uh, in Pali it is very clear in our mind when we hear the word Ghana Vinyana. Vinyana arising depending on the smell and the nose is called Ghana Vinyana. <coughs> then Jiva Vinyana. Tongue, taste come together, consciousness arises is called tongue consciousness or Jiva Vinyana. When the body touches a tangible object, consciousness arises, that is called Kaya Vinyana. When all of them appear again and again and again, they all get, take, uh, take, get another name, that is called Dhamma. Dhamma can be uh, the mind objects. All mind objects are called Dhamma. And then mind consciousness arises, Mano Vinyana arises, Mano Vinyana. Now, third aspect of the dependent, of the dependent organization is Vinyana. Uh, sankara Pachya Vinyana. So Sankara activities are there, consciousness arises. And therefore the consciousness has these six different names. So Buddha asked the Venerable Sati, Sati, which of these consciousness goes from life to life? Eye consciousness, ear consciousness, nose consciousness, tongue consciousness, body consciousness, or mind consciousness. Then he got even more, more perplexed, confused. Then, <clears throat> Buddha gave even example to make it very strong uh, impression in his mind. It is just like when you burn uh, some dirt 
some uh, trash. We call uh, trash fire. When you burn uh, hay, you can say hay fire. When uh, wood is burned, we, we call wood fire. Like that, whatever the fuel you use for burning something, burning, the name of fire takes the name takes the name of the fuel gas fire petrol fire kerosene oil fire house fire forest fire and so forth they take names the the, the fire takes name of the fuel it uh, consumes so when the buddha mentioned these things when the balsati was very quiet <clears throat> and then Buddha went on explaining how dangerous it is because uh, uh, consciousness is is like uh, magic. Mayu pramati vinyana. Mayu pramati vinyana. If it, uh, the magician does not produce that something that exists. Magician does not produce something that exists or something real. For instance, magician may put a body in a box and you, he opens the box. And human living person he puts in the box, open the box, and then he takes a sword and cut the bo box into two with the one blow then you will hold your head and even shout, thinking that the body that he put in the box was cut into two pieces. Next moment, that body stands next to him, not cut into pieces. So he can create that image, that, that perception, that thought in our mind, and consciousness is like that. It arises at that moment so quickly and disappears so quickly. Since it is, it, it is repetitive, it repeats so fast there is no measure to measure the speed of changing consciousness. So quickly it appears so quickly disappears. For instance, in this little talk, how many millions of moments of consciousness arises for me to make this sound? And I cannot uh, uh, pinpoint how many of them are, how many of them arise. They arise and I simply use consciousness to express what I want to express. So, <clears throat> uh, consciousness takes also different names. Uh, in Sanyutta Nikaya, <clears throat> Buddha used three words. All these three words are synonymous. But word is used separately in the, depending on the context. What are the three words he used in Sanyutta Nikaya for the same thing? Chitta, Mano, Vinyana. And he said, he said, Chittang Itipi, Mano Itipi, Vinyanang itipi vuchati. Because this entity, this phenomenon, is called either chitta, mano, or vinyana. Now, chitta is called chitta in Pali, used for two things. One is the picture. Other is the mind. 
and the other chit and also uh, picture mind and uh, uh, multiplicity variety of things variety for these three meanings the word chit is used for instance uh, when you would the mention that uh, chit is uh, more uh, variable than a picture itself picture that means picture that you draw the mind uh, that picture is drawn so friends chit uh, uh, the one who drew the picture has uh, uh, variable things, many, many more things than the, than he produced in the picture. For instance, uh, if he draws a picture of a handsome man or beautiful woman, how many th moments of consciousness arose in his mind. He has to be conscious of the color, the, the what do you call, the, the, the board or uh, fabric he used, uh, the paper he used, and he has to think of all the minute details of that person he, he draws, uh, head, hair, body, the color, the skin, uh, and uh, so forth, uh, of both uh, of man and or woman. And when you look at that picture, the artist want you to have, if the picture happens to be a, a, a woman's picture, he wanted you to look at the picture and not get upset. But when he wants you to look at the picture, he wants you to have a desire, greed, attachment, clinging, craving for that particular picture. If he wants to make the person look angry, he, will have, he has to draw a picture with that uh, features, that uh, appearance, that mood. If somebody is sad, you have to pick, draw the picture in that way for you to feel sad. And so forth, that the artist has to have uh, very many different variety of state of mind to draw that picture for you to experience what he wanted you to experience. So, <clears throat> Therefore, that the picture he draws with his mind, and his mind is has more power, possibility, and strength to produce all sort of things in our mind. And Buddha said, animals, animals uh, are, have. Uh, he, 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 didn't, he said that he did not know any other uh, thing that's so variable as animals. Because if there are uh, four trillion animals in the world, they have four ways of uh, uh, behavior, appearance, and uh, movements, and so on. And therefore, the mind, Buddha said, the mind is even more uh, variable, the chitta. So the word chitta is used for that purpose, to show the variety of the possibilities uh, of uh, 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 creation, creating various things. Mano, this is how I interpret, I don't see them any uh, if you ask me, where did you, do you find all this? I found this, uh, uh, the mind is more uh, variable, uh, 
and so forth in Sanyuti Nikaya. That's my, I know. But all the examples I gave you, you don't find all of them in one place, all the details. Uh, so that is Chit, the name used for consciousness. Number two, I said three words. Two is Mano. Mano is to think, man, to think. And we can think and think and think until we go crazy. Because so much we can think, so much we can create all, all sort of things. <clears throat> we have taught all our human history thinking and that is another name for consciousness and the last is vijnana vijnana means knowing separation of two things in its definition in pali is vijana teti vijnana vijana vijana means knowing things separately you can uh, consciousness can separate mentally can mind can see things separately uh, like color separation uh, mind can do that so uh, distinguishing one from the other separating one from the other that is the function of vijnana and these three are same uh, used synonymously for the same mental state now all of them happen only when the volitional formation uh, arises volitional formation that means will arises it is called in partly uh, chand <coughs> Uh, to do something at the same time either one or all these three can take place chitta mano and all these three can work together at the moment we have a will uh, that is why buddha said chanda mulaka sabya dhamma chanda mulaka means mula means root uh, Mulaka means from the root. What root? Chand, desire. Mulaka, Sabbe Dhamma. Sabbe Dhamma means all the Dhammas. All the Dhammas, Dhammas in mental states, can arise depending on will. Chand. Of course, Chand has two meanings. <laughs> One is uh, wholesome, other is unwholesome. If we have a will to do something wrong, that is unwholesome will, unwholesome chand, akusala chand, akusala chand, un unskillful will. There is another chand called kusala chand. Kusala chand means the skillful will. Will has will, full will. A skillful will, as I mentioned the other day, uh, would definitely lead in one direction to attain liberation unskillful will will lead us to woeful state of existence woeful state of mind so in <clears throat> uh, when will arises mano chit vijnana arises when will arises sankhara arises so Therefore, this is very important thing to remember with regard to uh, these three words. Uh, for instance, one, one word, uh, mano, in the Dhammapada, the first stanza, first stanza we recite every day, is called mano pubbangama dhamma. <coughs> All the dhammas, the mind is the leader, forerunner of all the dhammas. Mano Setta, mind is the chief. Mano Maya is mind made uh, of all Dhammas. In that uh, consciousness, Chit, 
also are implied, but the dominant word is mano. So it, when we when we use these three words, one is used, others are uh, implied, and therefore these three are not separate three things. They all are one. Then <clears throat> we have uh, some other details to talk about uh, vinyana. Uh, which I uh, try to hold on to some uh, for the next uh, uh, discourse, like uh, uh, the things that Buddha mentioned in Mahanidana Sutta, that is extremely important. But I don't want to start it right now because uh, I cannot finish it. Uh, it is better not to start something that I cannot finish. I, I will uh, do it, I will start it tomorrow and we continue this uh, talk on uh, Vinyana. With this, friends, I want to conclude this morning's uh, little talk on dependent origination. Mind you, all this series, all these uh, little talks, uh, uh, explain the way how I uh, use uh, I, I give this to explain dependent origination. So with this, uh, once again, I want to wish the same wish that I mentioned twice already. That is, uh, we want to uh, wish all those who are in pain and suffering, be free from suffering, and also those who are relatives and friends of those deceased, they also have pain and suffering. And there are, we want to wish them to be free from suffering. And there are individuals and groups and organizations and governments uh, trying to help these people in many different ways. Some even use the uh, uh, force uh, out of compassion, of course. They use force using, uh, you know, regular forces to make people uh, understand the danger of this virus and they do all sort of uh, uh, things to uh, quarantine, rehabilitate and uh, providing medicine. Uh, giving some financial aid and so forth. And in all these cases, leaders take leadership. The real leadership, very compassionate, right, wise leadership is to be compassionate, have metta, have farsightedness, and think of the subject, the countrymen, uh, people, as one single human mass and without any distinction, they should be able to treat all of them fairly and wisely and make some very compassionate decisions, right decisions at this right moment without wasting their time. If the longer they wait, the worse this disease can be, it can spread and more life will be lost. And therefore, all leaders must be very right, righteous, kind, compassionate, wise. And others who are very generous, supporting in many different ways, financially, physically, with their skill, especially those who use their wealth of skill, wealth of education, knowledge, uh, are trying to uh, find some uh, vaccine. We want to wish them to be successful uh, very quickly. The quicker, the better, and more lives we can save. With all this uh, wonderful meta-friendly thought, I like to uh, conclude this and thank all of you who participated in this and who are very in sincere wish uh, to 
make this work. Uh, I want to thank all of you and may you all be free from suffering and attain liberation. Thank you.